Remember to subscribe, click the bell to receive notifications, and visit WayneD.com. Hey everybody, it's Wayne D. Francesco. Welcome to the website, WayneDFrancesco.com. And we're looking at an old buddy of mine, Jeff Sluman, one of the smallest physically tour players. Also one of the most consistent guys in the last 25 years. I played with him a number of times, practice rounds and uh, some of the majors and tour events that I've played in and I can tell you that uh, Jeff can flat out strike a golf ball so I thought it'd be real interesting to take a look at what, uh, what a guy of his stature does to hit the ball as well as he does and definitely not short um, so let's take a let's take a peek so the best angles that I had uh, that were stationary were this iron shot and uh, it's a three wood shot that I filmed pretty sure this was at uh, Hazeltine in uh, 02 I think and I had my sneaking around with my tripod on this one so let's take a look one thing that you'll see right away is that amazing hip movement through impact. Just check this out. I mean, you could literally just play that if you were trying to get your lower body to snap into the shot more aggressively you could watch this swing over about 500 times because you won't see a more synchronized movement of arms and hips through impact so let's take a look at that a little closer so a lot of, a lot of little movements that I would just call these little athletic triggers you can see them bounce a little a little forward press a little forward movement with the legs and then another forward press with the hands and arms and then a back movement with the whole body loading right and a tiny bit of up Jeff keeps his hands really low and super close to him at address and I'll show you that from the uh, down the line view in a second but a lot of extension and a fairly late wrist cock so you can see it at left arm parallel here we've got the club up at about 45 50 and certainly in no hurry to cock those wrists just stretching it you can see the hips here's the initial box the hips have moved off somewhat significantly here probably three or four inches a slide and this is something that you know normally if I was teaching I'd be like okay can't afford to do this because the recovery is so difficult for the average guy. Of course, Jeff's not the average guy. And when you watch this thing drive into the ball, now look how far over there his hips got. So he got a perfect amount of slide from the initial position, but look how far that had to go from the negative position that he moved into in the backswing. So he got himself back that way. And then just drove the heck out of it and you can also see the perfect amount of head movement just recovers that inch or so of right movement right back into the box and one of the things that 
I think is really great about this swing is watch his head as he goes into and through impact. Not one iota of backup. So no drop back, just everything forward into the ball. Look at that impact position. That's just crazy good there. Then another thing that that I always see in the best ball strikers is once the hips get to the furthest left point, which he achieves about there. So we'll call this furthest left. Watch where he finishes with his belt buckle right up against there. So another cool thing to aim for in any swing. Check the feet out. With that drive, you know it's going to be tipped over onto the left outside edge of his foot on the left foot. You can see the right foot driving inward and not only driving inward but remember the toe started here. Watch where that thing ends up. Right. You'll see that in Hogan. I remember Jeff goes about 5'6". I think the Wikipedia said 5'7", but I'm 5'8". I don't think Jeff's 5'7". I might be wrong. But he weighs about 140 pounds, and I'm telling you, the guy can hit it at 290, and he just flushes it. I really like his grip. Let me take a look at his grip. It's the kind of grip that I that I teach you can see the left hand bent over the club I like that what I would call a vertical wrist position there now a couple more just to give it a the flavor of full bore release into the ball. Pretty sweet. Now, let's take a look at this from the other side. Now, one of the things that you'll notice here, if I draw the hip box, you're not going to see too many guys, maybe a Furyk, whose hands are going to be inside of the of that knee line there. So look where the edge of his club is here. I was playing a practice round with Slew at the at the Kemper one year, and, and he set up to hit a driver on one hole, and I said, Jeff, let me get into your stance for a second. So I got into his stance with the driver, and I, I literally could not see how I could hit the ball from where he was. I was so close to it. It was, like, amazing. I just shook my head and like, I have no idea how you do that. So, let's watch this. You can see the club, even from that close, it's going to go right up the plane. Not much face rotation. And without the, without the face rotation there, what you're going to find is the right arm stays above the left. Shaft's going to get vertical and then cross. Now if we look at the leg movement, you'll see that the right leg has moved backwards more than the left has gone forward, which is not something you see that often. But a nice stepped creation in the right hip, you can see it out past the hip box here. Again, creating space since he stands so close to it to begin with. Now you'll see the hands travel pretty close to at the ball, a little bit in, but not much. So we draw that line, just a fraction inside the ball there. But notice how the shaft is going to constantly bend back.
Here's the shaft at the top. You can see it kick and bend back. Now, one thing you'll notice here is how much higher the hands are on the approach than they were at a dress, which you're going to expect with the hands way down here in the crotch to begin with. Still, it's coming in there fairly high. And this is where you'll see something that Slew is just great at, that left wrist, that bend, bend down of the left wrist into the ball and then right on through. So he's striking the ball with the, the shaft pretty much on that midline and then right around to the left. So you can see how deep that right leg is there until he hits the ball. So the hips way back in the box there. Now, this is swing that doesn't really have much lowering going on. I'll show you a couple more back views here. You see a little bit of a lift right there where you see the where you see the head just pop up. And then it'll come back down underneath the line a little bit. Another thing you'll see here that's different in comparison with what you'll see with the longer clubs. Notice how the left leg takes its time getting out of the way so not a real aggressive hip movement to open with the irons. But if we go to If we go to a let's look at a couple of shots here. So watch the watch the hip movement here. So you can see left leg out of the way much much faster than it is on the on this particular iron shot. Now he's he's practicing over here on the right and he's on the golf course here on the left, so again got to sort of keep in mind what you're filming here, what you're looking at, but if we go over to another shot on the golf course, again we'll see that the arms and hands are down a little bit further before the legs clear with the iron shot. Then you see with the with the longer club. So here with the driver you see a just a fraction of space between the grip end and the lower body. Same type of takeaway. You can see the lack of face rotation. Right arm above the left, vertical shaft, crossed and then kick it back, open up, bring it in high. Now we'll see the educated release right around to the left. It's always like these shots from down the line. So here's the here's the ball. So we can see the ball take off here. Now you want to watch the club. I always like that. And I always I really want to show this picture to Butch Harmon and Johnny Miller and Brandel Chambly and anybody that starts talking about down the line. Let's chase that thing down the line. I have no idea what they're talking about. Uh my my guess is they're all talking about what it feels like, but that certainly isn't what happens. Good ball strikers don't chase the club down the line. They just hit the ball. At a golf swing is a an arc on a plane, so it's it's a circle. It goes to the it goes around to the left after you hit it. It doesn't go down the line. So 
So, so again, a lot of different different things. You know, I talk a lot about lowering in the swing. Jeffrey lifts up, then he lowers down a little bit, not very much. Take a look at that left wrist right here. You can see it starting to bend down. Now these are things that you can't teach. What I would teach is an approach that would be a little bit lower than that so that you wouldn't have to do that. But of course that wouldn't help Jeff because he's really good at what he does. It's a big difference between what you would teach the normal guy and what you would do with somebody that's as good as a as a Jeff Sluman if he ran into problems with his swing. Now another thing you can see there relative to that shot I showed you on the range is how aggressive he is here on the course with this swing compared to the one I showed you over here where he's just being a little more lazy hitting that ball which is probably why the legs didn't clear as fast still the beautiful free movement through the ball that's really what you want to focus on with this swing All right, there's my friend Jeff Sluman. Great golf swing.